Hello Baker Gearheads, welcome to our shop. We're working on a 2015 Street Glide today. We're going to do, be doing a tapered main drive gear bearing kit installation. This is shown on our grudge box gear because I'll be finishing up with the grudge box install. But we make these for the factory cruise drive replacement which is 2007 and later models. So. This is the adapter kit here that we're going to be the first item installed. First part we're going to get is our, uh, our tool plate here. Show you the plate because it's crucial on which way that this goes. You want to have the counter bore facing the case and then you want to have where it's two holes into your left hand and down below. So you won't be able to see the counter bore or the writing. That's important to how this goes. I'm just going to grab our socket head cap screws now. Grab a spacer. Another spacer here. Putting the spacers on the back side. Grab our wrench. I'm going to take the threaded, threaded bar with the nut and the washer. The washer is going to face, face the counter bore on the plate. And slide that in. You're going to take the cup next and put that on the end of that assembly. Should snap on there. The little bit of, it's a snug fit. It's got an O-ring on there to help fit. So careful with with the assembly you can drop the pieces. We're going to take the adapter now and we're going to face that with the cone facing home. So that's going to go into the bore. You want to put that onto your cup installation tool. Make sure that that sits nice and flush. Flat and spins around there nicely. And then you're just going to run the screws in finger tight. You don't need to run these tight yet because we're going to back them off here in a second. Okay, with those finger tight on there, back them off about a half a turn. And then what you want to do is hold the plate straight and then start running the nut in. And what this is going to ensure is that the cup goes in straight to the bore. So I'm turning the nut on the back side here. Once that starts getting snugged up in there, I'm going to back the nut off just a little bit. That way I can tighten the plate back up. Okay, you can tighten the nut back up at now. And now what we're going to have to do so we're going to have to apply heat to all around the bearing bore here. And we're going to do that so that it, the adapter slides in nicely because it's oversized over the bore size. So we'll get our torch out and start applying some heat. You want to achieve 175 degrees to 200 degrees Fahrenheit when you're doing this. Once the case is up to temperature, you don't want to waste any time and uh, you want to start running that, uh, running the nut in. So you're going to hold the threaded rod with an Allen wrench and just start tightening, 
Tightening this down. You're gonna run it all the way in until it seats. You should feel a little bit of resistance when you're pressing it in. If it gets tight at any point, you'll want to stop and heat the case back up. That should just drive right in. Add a little bit more heat now. The tool should sit about flush when it's all the way in there. So once that's in there like that, and the, the tool's tighten all the way up, you know that the adapter is seated all the way. At this point you can back it off. And you want to do a visual check of this. And I'll show you how to do that here. Back these off. So you want to run the nut all the way up to the cup adapter. And then you want to pull the tool back. And then you would just want to do a visual inspection all the way around and make sure that the adapter is in there flat against where the snap ring is going to seat. So it'll stick out a little bit in there. And then next step is uh, after we remove the tools, we're going to put in the snap ring. So everything looks good and flush in here, so we're going to remove the tool. With the tool out, you can do another visual inspection. Look around and make sure that the cup is seated flat. And we're going to install our snap ring. The snap ring is a beveled snap ring, and so it has an edge on it. That edge needs to face out towards you when you go to install this. Another trick with the snap ring pliers is that the tines are offset. You want to have the, the flat side towards the outside of the snap ring and that way you don't damage the seal surface when you're installing. Once the snap ring's in, you want to again visually check and inspect and make sure it's gone all the way into its groove. And it should look something like this where the ears are about that far apart. Now we're going to install our main drive gear. We're going to use a main drive gear um, tool A-07 is our main drive gear assembly kit. Uh, that's the tool kit. If you don't use our kit, you need to use um, the uh, sprocket pulley spacer that's included with the kit. Uh, that way you can properly space it out because the factory cup for tool installation is not deep enough to install it properly. So that's just a little tech tip there. Um, the gear I've sprayed down with a light lubricant uh, WD-40 works well for this. You can spray as much on you on there as you want. You don't want a heavy lubricant. Like a, you don't want to use transmission lubricant at this point. Just a light lubricant for this installation. Check to make sure that your O-ring's on there and check to make sure that you do have a spacer on there. Kind of hard to see in here but uh, the spacer is already installed. 
I'm going to go around to the other side of the bike to get the main drive gear through and I'll meet you guys back over here. Quick tip before I put this in on the other side. I've taken the cup and already put it in there and put the bolt through. You want to take, take your time and make sure that the threads don't hit the seal while going through. So, and when you're installing this from the other side, just gently slide it in there. We don't want to rock or bang the needle roller bearings on their bearing seats here. Alright, with main drive gear here and through, you're going to take your needle bearing and uh, like when we installed the adapter, you want the cone side facing, facing in. If you install this backwards, it's not going to work right and it won't roll. So, you can't really... So. What I'm doing with my left hand is holding the main drive gear seated up so that the bearing, the, the tapered bearing is sitting flush in there. And then I'm just holding on to the bolt through there while I install the cup from the outside. Finger tight up the nut, and then you want to take your other hand and grab onto the cup and pull it straight out so that the bearing and main drive gear stay straight to the tapered setup. This will help on uh, the full install here. And you're going to take the wrench and go in from the back side and hook onto the bolt. And then you want to take your other wrench here and just start running it in. Once you get a little tension on it, you'll be able to hold this cup side and hold the tension on it. So now that I've got a little tension on the bat the bearing, you can see the wrench will stay up here because I'm keeping that torque on it while I tighten this up. Run these two in until they're tight. And then you can leave the tool on there for now. We're going to go ahead. We're going to do a spin check. That's going to be for an audible level. This bearing feels like it's spinning freely, like a skateboard wheel would. It doesn't have any weird stops, so we know it's installed nice and straight. And if you listen closely, you can hear it has a little tunk, tunk, tunk. This bearing seems like it's set up correctly, but I'm going to go ahead and do the next procedure, which is check it with a dial indicator. When you're installing this tool, it's just, just a flat plate. You can actually use the, the install tool plate, too, if you'd like. But make sure that the plate doesn't hit the main drive gear like that. It's the tool, so it, you know you want to make sure it can still spin a little bit freely if you need it to. So we can check a different couple different locations on there. This is just a magnetic base dial indicator. And we're just gonna put it on the end here. A little bit out of the way. I'm just setting it to zero, but when checking this, you just want to do a straight in and out pull, in and out. That way, you, that's how you check the end play on these. The 
Tolerance is 0 0.0005, half a thou, to 0 0.003, three thousandths. So half a thou to three thousandths is the tolerance on this. This gear here is measuring in at one and a half thousandths. So we don't need to take it apart and check and change out the spacer. If we did have to, if it was too tight, we'd take out the spacer. Too tight meaning the gear wouldn't spin. We need to, we need to add a fatter spacer. If it's too loose, you'll add the, th the thinner spacer. And that will tighten it all up. So I'm going to remove this now and uh, remove the tool and get to installing the seal and everything else. Thanks for joining us today, guys.